So hi everyone, um, welcome to our show and tell about behaviors for script runner. Um, this one is specific to the Jira service desk update and the upcoming behaviors um, update as well for script runner overall. Um, if you guys don't know me, I joined the uh, product marketing team recently um, at the start of the year and I look after script runner for Jira server, cloud and Bitbucket. So behaviors. So in my short time here, um, I think of behaviors as automated forms. Um, for example, if you're doing some online shopping and you are in the checkout page, you're entering details about yourself, um, and you're signing up for an account, for example. When you're entering a password, sometimes there is minimum requirements for a password. And if you don't meet that minimum requirement, it won't let you proceed and there's an error message. So that is an example of behaviors in the real world. Um, and it's something similar what happens in the world of Jira as well with script runner behaviors. So I'm going to move into the actual concept of behavior. So there are three main things. The first one is an initializer. So the initializer basically loads when the form is loaded. Um, it's something which sets predefined or pre-populated values. So for example, if you have a description label um, or a description field and you want to pre-populate it with a, a certain template that the user can enter um, information in. So basically you're in charge of what you want the user to enter information in. This is important because then you can manage that information better and it's not just uh, complete random information that the user can enter. Also you can set options for the user so um, you ha if you have any multiple choice labels or uh, drop down menus um, you can set those to be custom depending on the user or the, the type of behavior you've set. Um, and this can come in useful for later on when I talk about the other two concepts. So this is what Initializer can do. The second key concept is condition. Now, condition is really important because it basically lets you do certain behaviors within Script Runner and within Jira based on whether an event or a condition is true. So, for example, if the user belongs to a particular group or is in a specific position or a role, then do then show them uh, the form in this format and these fields. So you can set the, uh, the form to look in a particular way depending on the condition that the user is or the condition of the form itself. Um, so another key part of condition is you can attach it to a workflow action or step. Now this is where things can get really interesting and you can, and you can do really advanced um, behavior uh, settings and behavior rules uh, within JIRA. Um, and yeah, so that's conditions. Finally, um, and this is probably the most important, the server-side script. Now this is basically a blank canvas for you, the scripter, or the coder to go and create your rules and your conditions based on the other two concepts. So for example, if you have set some conditions, now you can go and code exactly how you want the behavior to behave based on those conditions and you can add some custom uh, behavior additionally to that. So remember when I was talking about the shopping basket form earlier, when you're entering some information and the password is incorrect, um, incorrect format, so you can do the same thing in Jira with Script Runner, uh, and you can prevent a user from going to the next screen or submitting an issue form by setting up the server-side script to do so. Um, also, modify help test. So this is basically, you can modify the error messages that come up. So if you're preventing a user from proceeding, you can show an error message saying, please enter information X in field X before you can press continue. You can also set field dependency in server side, and this plays well with the whole condition and initializer um, concept. So for example, if a user has entered 
um, a particular or, or selected a particular item from field above, then in the field below, change the options to suit. So you'll see an example shortly. On to our demo. Fingers crossed this works. So we have here a form for JIRA service desk. This, you can see the uh, different fields and different entries, and you can see the drop down item, which is called priority. At the moment, there are no behaviors applied to this. So right now, what you can do with it is currently um, what you can do with JIRA. So here you can select from the different priority items. And based on that, you can choose the different components. But there is no rule set at the moment to prevent the person from going forward, um, depending on any uh, items chosen. So we're going to create a behavior within script runner and behavior section. So we go to add behavior, type in a name, and then add a description as well. So we know what the behavior is about. Now, clearly, there's only one behavior being added here, but it's important to make sure your description and name is uh, of a good format. So then you um, map it to the service desk mapping. You select the service desk and the request type you want to apply it to. And then click <coughs> Add Mapping. Then you go into Fields, and this is where you can edit, modify the nuts and bolts of things. So. I talked about initializer earlier, so here you can see it. You can set up an initializer function. Right now, Neil is looking for the priority field, which we want to add the behavior to. Um, you can see the conditions here, which you can toggle. But uh, instead of toggling, we want to do a manual server-side script. So going back to the form we saw earlier, we couldn't do any um, anything particular in that form. But now Neil is going to script this so that depending on the value chosen in the priority label in the priority field, do certain actions. So what do we want to achieve from this particular example? So in this example, we want to set the priority. Um, if they choose the priority to be blocker, then there should be an error message or a help task message which asks the user to enter the, uh, a com something in the component field. If they don't enter anything, then they can't proceed. So here <clears throat> we've got the if statement. So if the status is blocker, set the component field to uh, require to true. So they must enter something in there. And then we want to add a message within that component field, which will say, please provide you know, uh, uh, something in here before you can proceed. And then to finish off the code, we're going to add an else statement, which will be if any other status is chosen, then there's going to be no sort of requirements set. So you can just continue as normal. So very shortly, we will see this in action once uh, the code has stopped and is saved. Okay, so save, and now we move on to the form again. So now we're about to choose blocker, and you can see the uh, message sh uh, shown here that we typed. Um, so they can't proceed without entering something in the components because in this example, uh, if the priority is really, really important, then in order for the uh, support team to uh, prioritize it and categorize it properly, more information is needed. So you can really see how you can customize um, forms using behaviors in, in Script Runner. So I'm going to show you um, another example. So this is when you switch to the other priority and, and you don't need to have uh, any conditions. Um, so the other example is you, you can modify the behavior of tabs within forms. Um, so right now you're designing the tab. Here is the code which you can uh, look from the documentation or what you need to do. So this will go into the condition field again. There's our three friends, initializer, condition, and script side, sorry, server side script. 
Um, I've already got the code populated. Or when I say I, I mean Neil. Sorry, Neil. Um, and then when we move into the actual form, this will now do actions based on what is chosen on this field. So I select engineering, the engineering tab is shown. If I select marketing, the marketing one is shown. Also notice how the forms are different for marketing and engineering. So this is all done by behavior. And you get the message with the rest of it. So yeah, behavior is a, is a very, very powerful tool. Um, we recently had it sort of the interface um, revamped on a, a script runner for Jira server. And it's been integrated as well with uh, Jira service desk. So a very good sell for the IT service management um, message and the whole ITIL uh, lifecycle. So that's our demo. Thank you very much.